unable are the left to die, for love is immortality. I'm honored to be part of Sudbury in a town that actually has done this amazing monument and people still care. It, it was a very emotional moment when they unveiled the uh, memorial stone. Be now forever taken from my sight, though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass, of glory in the flower. We will grieve, not rather find strength in what remains behind. Wadsworth. She was a very special lady. Yeah. I think one of the reasons this 20th anniversary is much harder than I anticipated is because I'm at the same life place where my mom was, so my mom was 52 when she died, and I'm actually turning 50. There are many people that are currently getting into the fire service and EMS that were not even alive when this event happened. So I think it's very, very important that we remember, you know, all the um, people that gave their lives and um, provided support during that time. Yeah. Well, I was commencing a 16-hour uh, tour of duty, um, starting with a, with a road detail. Um, and that's what I was actually working when, when news started coming over the radio. Um, you know, a lot of uncertainty, what was gonna go on, you know, we went on a, on a heightened alert status. You know, I then resumed my patrol that evening and, uh, you know, definitely a lot of uncertainty and uh, very somber with all the loss of life that occurred that day. Our real mission at that point in time was to try and keep the calm. I think it was very, very important. Um, I know that directly after when the second airplane had hit, um, we were dispatched to multiple motor vehicle accidents out on Route 2 and they, all the patients that I had contact with on that particular day were in just dismay of what was going on and that's what drew their attention off from driving and that's why we had all these large, uh, the large number of accidents that we had. It's been um, much harder than I thought and my um, youngest daughter was three months old when my mom died um, and so she's always been this physical reminder of how much time has passed. Yeah, I suppose we could do that. We are replanting all of these plants here to make it more welcoming. And I think that's our emphasis going to the future, right? Yep, yep. So we'll have another commemoration. Every uh, year? Mm -hmm. This year. Um, and uh, we're working with the Historical Society on a special exhibit, um, which is going to be fantastic. But the garden will be here. And it's so funny, I never really ever paid attention to the word perpetuity before. And it was this garden where I heard it all the time. Right. And the, the driving mission of this garden in our committee was to keep it in perpetuity, maintained right. like this. Yeah. Um, and the neatest part is that everything other than the plaques was donated in kind. Right. Everything. There are three plaques, one for each of the people who from Sudbury were killed that day. And along with their names, there is a little verse. And that is how she kept remembering Jeff. He was frozen in that moment in time that she had known him till. Um, there were many, many people in tears that morning. It was a very emotional thing, and it still is and people still come every day. Jeff was, uh, I guess, uh, a month older than my son. And he was born in August 1965. My son was September 1965. And uh, 
They were involved on the, uh, in the Sudbury soccer program. I was a coach and uh, Jeff would always come up clamoring to be, I want to go back in, it's my turn. It's time you put me back in, bro, Mr. Clifton. I was always Mr. Clifton to the, to the boys. He was everybody's friend. There was no one who didn't like Jeff. You know, he didn't have any bad words to say about anyone. Jeff was always there for people. He was a kind person. Uh, I think he really saw the best in people. And this is part of the tr real tragedy in losing Jeff. Jeff was one of those people you want here today. We need people like Jeff for this world to be a better place. And this is what's so heartbreaking about losing him. But as far as the garden here, um, I'm a passionate gardener, still am and to the best of my ability. And after a Sudbury Design Group was asked to make a design for the outline, which was a circle with a center circle and the center circle enclosed a rock which was found on Goodman Hill. And that following winter, we met with Deborah Kruskal, who is a landscape designer, and we poured over books and plants that we wanted to incorporate into the garden, something that would do well in this particular space. And some plants did very well, in fact, too well, had to be cut back severely. Other plants just didn't like this location. Uh, at that time, there was a lot more shade. We need to remember uh, there is um, there's a distinct purpose in remembering and it's so easy to set things in corners of our minds so that the pain is not rehearsed so often but we need a place where that pain can actually grow something beautiful by way of memory so not only is it a garden that is beautiful and the, the landscaping is awesome and amazing but the memorials you know that that are there it's, it's it does its job and even for people that don't know they can pick up the story we met in college we, went, we both went to Bates College and we lived um, at, on the same floor in our dorm um, at opposite ends and the moment I saw him I was in love with him he could walk into a room and light up a room with his smile. Um, he just, he was a big teddy bear and, and he just, people gravitated towards him. And um, got married about two years after we got out of college and, uh, in my hometown in Guilford, which was a lot of fun. After living in Cambridge, we really wanted to um, move to a town that was very similar to the towns that we, we grew up in. Um, Peter really wanted trees, and I wanted um, an old house with a face, and we looked at 90 houses. And when we finally fought, found this one, he was actually on a business trip, and I came and saw it and got on the phone with him as soon as it was over and said, oh my god, I love it. It has your grandmother's wallpaper. It has the trees you want. It has old linoleum like my other grandmother's house. And, and he said, oh my god, what did you bid on it? So um, that was always our joke that I bought the house without him being home. He traveled a lot, um, absolute ton, um, and he didn't mind traveling. He was not um, doing as much of it, but he had been recruited to do these um, trade shows for this new company, and he really, he was very good at it. He was very technical, but he was also very personable, and that's not something that's very typical in computer programmer people. <laughs> I was, um very frazzled as a mother with a two-year-old son and a three-month-old daughter. My sister had just graduated from, my sister Jessica had just graduated from NYU, and my brother Nate um, had just started his freshman year at Fordham University. So the, the summer before um, my brother left for college, my parents took a beautiful trip. They went to um, Europe. Um, and we're starting to, I think, um, get a taste of what this life without, you know, children at home would be like. Um, and my mom was continuing her um, degree in early childhood education 
um, at Leslie at the time of her death. So I think she was really at a point where she was trying to figure out um, what she would like to do. My mom was flying to see my grandmother, who at the time um, was um, blind and um, living on her own, and you know all of my aunts and uncles and cousins. And so, my mom never flew in September, and this was actually the first flight she flew by herself. My dad was going to meet her there um, after like a business trip. That morning. Um, I had decided I was going to, uh, my husband at the time had bought me a double jogging stroller because I wanted to start losing that baby weight. So I had piled both kids into the double stroller. It took me like literally three hours to get them both in there. And when I came back, um, um, I turned on the TV and I think the second, um, no, the plane that had just hit the Pentagon. And I thought to myself, what a horrible coincidence this is. Um, I didn't really think much of it. Not even thinking that my mom was flying. Um, and then um, about 15, 20 minutes later, my dad called. Um, and like instantaneously, word spread, and I had my mom's friends at my house. Um, my friends were at my house. Um, I immediately knew that um, we were gonna be overwhelmed with all of that. Um, so trying to sort of, and something I think we all still struggle with, and if you talk to other, I think 9-11 people, how to grieve publicly and how to grieve pers personally and privately is, I think, a real um, struggle. One night, um, I, I believe it was the whole town, did a candlelight vigil, and I looked out my front door and all of my neighbors were standing in my front yard. <laughs> um, so that was really special. So things like that. Um, I also got a lot of um, really sweet gifts from people I didn't even know. Um, people dropped off little projects by little kids. Um, I have these really cute, um, I still have them, um, popsicle stick flags that they painted and put little pins on them. Um, little quilts would show up, little kids' drawings. Um, the two little schools, um, elementary schools, did big plaques that have um, were signed by everyone in the class. So things would just show up on my doorstep. Um, I would get, um, I had hundreds and hundreds of sympathy cards from people I didn't, and a lot of them obviously for people I did know, but there were a, a number from people I had never met who just said, I'm from Sudbury and I just, you know, wanted to know, wanted you to know that we're thinking of you. And it just, it was shocking that people would take that time and that to sit down and write a note for someone they didn't even know. The fact that there were people from all walks of life, Girl Scouts with cookie sales, there were Eagle Scout projects, there were school children, there were just everybody was at their best that we always wish as a town, as a community, as families that we always hope that we can be, and we were. And, um, and it was a good, in a good way, it was a good reminder um, and it makes me so proud to be from Sudbury that we do this, that we offer this for the families, but we offer it for the people that we've learned about since. The, the flight attendant that used to fly with Captain Oganowski that was on maternity leave, um, the next door neighbor of one of the victims, the, um, the family who moved here afterwards though and the, their kids went through LS. Um, and we have this spot and it just makes me so proud that Sudbury can do this. Kirsten Rupinian was um, actually a select person at that time and I met her in a restaurant and she asked me what my thoughts were. Would I be interested in, in having a memorial like that? And I had never really thought about it, but I was absolutely blown away that the town had already started the process. I told her that the town would respond and we were with her. The town got together with a group of people. We had several committee meetings. Out of those committee meetings, two separate entities were formed. One was Hope Sudbury, and the other was the September 11th Memorial Meeting Committee. And over the course of the next year, we reached out to several people that were involved in the community, our Sudbury Landscape Design, 
who designed the entire garden, the Michael Precourt for Precourt Stone, who donated the stone that we're looking at here, and many, many, many other people became involved in this project. And the overarching sentence that I can remember everybody saying was, whatever you need, we're gonna get this done. The first time I ever had to meet Rachel Goodrich, and I say had because I got put in charge of asking Rachel to come up with a verse for her plaque. Um, so we had an awkward first meeting, but I, it ended up going about five hours long. It was great, and she's one of my dearest friends. So Peter was very, very proud of his Irish heritage. And when Peter's brother got married, um, he was the best man and gave a best man toast. And that is how he ended the um, toast. And everybody was literally bawling by the time the toast was done. He had done a really fantastic job. Um, it always reminds me of Peter when I, when I read it. trying to figure out the quote. It was either my sister or my brother who, um, who thought of it, or maybe it was my, my dad, but um, it was a pretty easy decision to do it. My mom, like she was, um, you know, like she was such a Sudbury person. Um, she, <laughs> every 4th of July, she loved that parade. So I think it's very fitting that it's, you know, that memorial is at a place where, like, where would you find Cora on the 4th of July, sitting, you know, in her chair, clapping with everybody. Um, my brother was really involved in youth sports and, like, baseball, so she, you know, lived at, is it Featherland Field, which is over there? Um, and so I think that um, it couldn't have been at a more um, poignant place. I really think it fit who my mom was. The memorials have really become this place, um, especially for my kids, because they don't remember my mom. My brother's incredibly private, and he'll go there on her birthday and um, on, um, you know, Mother's Day and things like that. And um, I usually go up for my mom's birthday and on 9/11. And um, my son just graduated from college, and um, he was able to have a ceremony. Um, he went to Clark. But the first thing he said afterwards was, I want to go to Grandma Cora's memorial. So that's what we did. We drove over um, and he went in his cap and gown. So I think that that memorial will always be really special for my family because I think for, I think, you know, personally speaking, it is like a, a grave for us. I mean, I think it's for those that haven't been there, I highly recommend you go visit it. It's a very tranquil place where you can reflect and and remember those and 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 see how we can do better for ourselves and, and as part of the Sudbury community and, and the greater you know America American community. We had a family friend that was killed at the Pentagon, uh, Commander Dan Chanauer, first day in his new office, and as his mother would say, it was the um, first time in government history that they completed a project early. So he moved in three days early into his new office. And his mom had been my seventh grade reading teacher and just a very special person to our family. And so I was going back to Naperville, Illinois, where I grew up. And I had mentioned to the committee, we must have met, that I was going to be meeting with Mrs. Shanauer. Um, and this was probably four or five years later. And Betty came by my house and dropped off a piece of granite and said to me, I'd like you to give this to um, Pat um, when you see her. And it was a piece of our memorial stone that Mike Precourt had given to Betty. And she said, I want you to give it to her from one mother to another.
This stone represents the strength of the community, the strength of the people in this community, and the fact that we are and will continue to be involved in here and remember for all time. If people were to return to this spot and think of Jeff, uh, they think of the warm memories, whether on a team with him, in a classroom with him, just his, his good nature, his good sense of humor, uh, and just as a friend. Um, it's a great place to reflect. It's the first commemoration and hope to be, you know, God willing with health and, and still employed to be continued on in that respect role. Um, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity to remind those while paying tribute to those that lost their lives. And also, again, with that not forgetting not only that lost their lives, but don't forget what transpired and, and we can unite as a country, as a town. And I think, uh, you know, those that were here at the time in Sudbury should be proud of how they did come together on behalf of, uh, of the circumstances. It really is a, a place for healing. We give everybody in the, at the commemoration an opportunity to do a naming where they can just shout out a name. And um, yeah, there's new names that are spoken out every year. So I'm, I'm thankful that we can offer that. The garden makes me feel so honored to be a part of Sudbury. And I just, the, when I'm amazed every year when I see and hear how many people have shown up. And it just means so much to me that people haven't forgotten. And that it is meaningful to people to honor and remember. And so that just amazes me. And it really reminds me that, you know, we all have to remember and honor. It's a way to bring people together. And all of humanity is hurting in one way or another. And so when we're able to come together and, and set aside our differences and, you know, put some of that angst aside and, and, and maybe even feel that pain a little bit that we did, it helps us to recenter. And, and that's important sometimes. I understand the concept of lancing wounds and sometimes uh, that will happen to re-energize the healing process not to cause pain, but to inspire healing to continue and be more complete. With my mom, it's hard because it was also this horrific, you know, act of terror. Um, and so even today, I'm still trying to sort of balance all of that, but my mother um, would have wanted everyone to have really just gotten a message from it and just live a better, a better and more fulfilling life. Remember sunsets in Boston Kissing yellow concrete we watched all of them together Until we couldn't go to sleep Still I think about you often Cause ever since you've been gone I've been staring at the sunsets The sunsets of Boston Somewhere I can see the silver lining But it's so far away